Hello, and welcome back to Thomas Frank Explains. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to build a complete habit tracker in Notion. We're gonna go from a completely blank page to what you're seeing on screen right now. This nice multi-column habit tracker with this template button that you can hit to get a habit tracking worksheet for each and every week. Over time, as you track your habits using these worksheets, you're gonna get this page that is essentially a living record of your habit tracking progress. I've also made some mobile optimizations so you can easily track your progress either from the iOS or Android app for Notion or do it from the desktop app. And there's also this nice little toggle you can open up to go back through different weeks and see your history of habit tracking. And for each week, there is also a weekly summarization toggle so you can create a little summary and do some journaling about how that week went. Now, before we get into the tutorial, I do wanna mention that I've made this a free and public template that you can duplicate into your own Notion workspace. So if you don't wanna go through this entire tutorial, which is admittedly a little lengthy, you can go over to thomasjfrank.com templates to simply get the template for free and start using it right away. But if you wanna learn all the inner workings of this template, if you wanna boost your Notion knowledge and learn some advanced multi-column layout tricks that we're gonna be employing here, then buckle up and let's get this tutorial started. Well, hello there. Welcome back to another Notion Masterclass. This is gonna be a longer tutorial and today we are building ourselves a habit tracker. What you see on the screen right here, we have a multi-column layout and we have basically just a weekly worksheet that has checkboxes where we can check off the habits that we did. Uh, whenever a new week starts, you can simply click this little template button here to get yourself a new week. And then you would type in the date for that week. So this one was gonna be uh, May 16th, 2021, since we already had May 9th down here. And this is basically it. It's a very simple concept. And I wanted to keep it that way because I remember using this little uh, goal tracking notebook in college. It was called Pick Four. And I believe it was developed by uh, Zig Ziglar, his team. And every week you would flip to a new weekly worksheet where you would track your habits and track your goals. So this is kind of a, a notionized version of that concept here. And over time, what you would get is just this long page where you could scroll through and in one view, see your habit tracking progress, which is pretty cool. But there's actually some pretty interesting stuff going on under the hood of this system. And in this tutorial, we're gonna build it from scratch and you're gonna learn a few tricks along the way. So a, a few other little features about this habit tracking system that I wanna point out. Number one, we have, well, a nice little motivational picture and quote here. I just figured I'd throw that in there cause I kinda like, well, number one this is my favorite painting. So I wanna throw that in there. And then Bruce Lee quotes are just great. We also have a week log. So you'll notice whenever we create a new version or new instance of this template here, we get a heading for the week starting May 16th. So you can scroll through this, but there's also a table of contents block that adds a new heading every time we create a new week. So we can easily jump to a past week if we want to. We also have a calendar here, and literally the only reason that this is here is so you can see what the date is for when you're starting a new week. So I can just go, oh, it's, you know, 16th is next Sunday, 23rd is the Sunday after that. That's the only reason that's here. And then up here we have this little, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call it a jump block. I don't know if that's the correct term. There's no real correct term for this. Basically, we just link to these blocks from up here and I'll show this with some B-roll. This is so you can easily jump to these areas, which are gonna be at the bottom of the screen on your phone, uh, instead of having to scroll all the way down there. So this is very easy to use on a phone when everything is a single column, but it's kind of designed to be used in this multi-column view. So let's start building this. And as we build it, we're going to learn some interesting tricks with columns in Notion. Uh, so we're gonna go here, and this is, my template page here, the template database. So you're gonna have access to this if you uh, check out the template link in the description below. And what we're gonna do is just create a page and we'll call it Habit Tracker from scratch. This is another from scratch series video. So first thing I like to do when we are creating something from scratch, it's gonna be a big multi-column template like this is to create a full width page. And there we go. If we look over at what we have, we have a few different tasks here. We need to create this column, which has um, our picture and our quotes and our stuff over here. But the main thing we need to create is this worksheet. And then we need to create the template block that has a copy of the worksheet in here. So let's start by doing this right here. And if you're following along with me, I'm gonna give you a, a very useful pro tip here, which is gonna be, don't create your multi-column habit tracking worksheet inside this page 
create it inside another page. Uh, and the reason for that is Notion has some weird quibbles when it comes to multi-column layouts and getting them exactly as you want. There are some limitations when it comes to simply dragging and dropping blocks, but you can get around those limitations if you put things inside a page first and then transform that page into a block. So well, I guess into a, a different kind of block. A page is a block in Notion. So transforming it into like a heading or something. So let's go ahead and create a page and we'll just do a slash page and we'll just call it a worksheet. And let's do a heading two, so pound, pound. And we're gonna go week starting May 2, 2021. Doesn't really matter which week it is. And I wanna give this a green background. So slash green, find green background, and there we go. Now let's do a heading three for the first day we're gonna do. I'm gonna enter down and do dash, dash, dash for horizontal rule. And then let's just give it one habit. So now we have one day here. And I'll go ahead and make this full width as well. I'm gonna copy these. And if I go here, this is a cool trick I learned. I don't I don't go to the next line and then paste because you always get this, this blank line here. I just go to the block that has content and then paste. So we could call that Monday. Now there's something we could do here where I could literally, we could copy this and I could take you know one of these, bring it over here, drag and drop, and then take these elements, put them here, take this one, put it here under this column, take this one, put it here under this column. And if we look at our original one here, we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I built it this way because when we look at multi-column layouts like this, typically, you know, at least in Western cultures, we read left to right, and this just makes sense. And if you look at this on a phone, if you actually look at the demo or the template version on the phone, it's going to stack up correct. You're gonna have Sunday, then you're gonna have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll show that on screen with some B-roll. Now, you're not gonna get that result if you just do it the way we just did it, where we have created two columns here. Uh, because what we do, what we have now, and you can actually see this little dividing line that sometimes pops up, is we have one column, and then we have another column. So if I were to make this Tuesday down here and Wednesday down here, what I'm actually gonna end up with is Sunday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday. I don't want that. So we can't make a column and a column. We have to make two columns and then a separator and then two columns and then a separator. So let's go ahead and delete all this content. We'll have Sunday and Monday. And now let's just create another horizontal rule. We can see that this horizontal rule is only going from here to here. So I'm gonna drag it down until we get it to be a full width thing. There we go. Now we can delete our blocks in here. So this is basically what we want to copy, this whole structure here. And if I click on the rule itself and I paste, I can get it down here. Now notice something when you copy multi-column things in Notion and then you paste them, they don't really cooperate. They stay on a single column layout. It's kind of a, it's a bug, it's a quibble, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of annoying. So we sort of have to go through here, drag and drop a couple of times and just create our, our layout from scratch. So once again, we'll copy that, paste it, drag. Okay, now I'm gonna go through and rename these. And finally to get the layout we had earlier, we'll add this little toggle for a weekly summary this would be a nice little block where you could just add a written summary of how your week went. And you could tell yourself like, here's why I didn't get certain things done or here's why it was a great week. But now we have the layout we want. So here's something cool. If you go through here and delete these full width, double column spanning horizontal rules like that, this structure still holds up. So now when you look at it on a phone, it's gonna be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, stacked up in one column correctly. So a little bit of a pain when you're building it, but now you have it. So the next thing we wanna do is go back to our actual from scratch thing. And let's go ahead and drag in our picture. I just have it copied to my clipboard. So what we can do is drag this to the left of worksheet. Now we have two columns and let's just go ahead and resize these so this isn't as big. And why don't I go bring in my quote? Obviously you can use whatever kind of quote you want, but I like Bruce Lee quotes for habit trackers at least. Put that there. And then we might wanna create our week log and our calendar. 
Let's create these a little later. I'm just gonna keep these toggles here and we'll make them in a bit. For now, we wanna figure out how to get this right here, like we had it earlier. So all we have to do is turn this page into something else. What should you turn it into? Well, you can pretty much turn it into anything you want and you're going to get all the content from that page sitting on the page. And interestingly, if there is a multi-column layout sitting in this page, it's going to be replicated in here. And that's very, very useful. Let me show you why this is useful. If I create a heading one and you know we have it here, so this is, uh, this is you know, one column, two column, and then, and then I create two toggles. And this is you know for anything. If I want this to be nested next to this, so two columns underneath this column, I can't do it. It won't let me do it. I can only create three columns, and that is not what I want. But let's go ahead and delete this. If I turn this into a text block, I get that. I get that multi-column layout nested under a column, which is itself part of a multi-column layout. It's column inception here. Uh, one interesting thing about turning it into a text block specifically, this does not work for other kinds of blocks, but if you turn a page into a text block, you're going to get the text here, and then you're gonna get all the content nested inside the text block. And that is useful because you can then drag this anywhere you want and retain that multi-column layout. You can also duplicate it and remember how earlier when I duplicated my multi-column layout and it all went to single column? Because it's all in this nested text block, I don't have that problem, it actually works. So that can be pretty cool. Uh, but actually, I'm gonna keep it as text for now, but let's go ahead and duplicate it. What I really want in the end is for this to be turned into a heading, and I'll use heading two. So that way I can actually delete the word worksheet and just be working with this right here. This looks exactly like it did in our demo version. And it now has the benefit, if we come into week log and we create a table of contents block, it has the benefit of adding this heading here. We could do it with that nested test block, but it's just gonna look a little messy. The reason we wanna do a text block first though is because we are gonna be able to duplicate this into our template block. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're going to hit slash and create a template block or a template button. Let's call this add new weekly worksheet and then if we just take this and drag it here you get your multi-column layout inside the template block this is something that a lot of people who get into notion find to be a frustrating limitation with the template block you can't create multi-column layouts inside this template block except you can if you use this trick so to summarize create your content in a sub page turn that sub page into a text block drag it in to your template block area. From there, we can go ahead and turn this into a heading and get rid of the heading itself. And now we have exactly the content we want retained in a multi-column layout. So we can hit close. And I do notice that this template block is actually sitting as a single column. So I'm gonna drag it here to make sure it's in this column. And now when we hit the button, we get a new worksheet. So I'm gonna change this to May 9 2021 and actually one thing i might want to do is come in here and configure this to just be date so you know to change it when you create it so this functions pretty much like those paper goal tracking notebooks where if you want to change up your weekly routine then you would come in here to the template block and actually change it so let me go ahead and do that now and now we have the weekly schedule that we're committing to for the foreseeable future this seems like a lot of manual work but if you're tracking habits over a long period of time, you really shouldn't have to tweak this all that often. But if you have to, you can just come into this template block and you can do it. So now if I click it, boom, I've got a worksheet and I can change the date. Let's say this is for next week, May 16th, 2021. Now I've got a worksheet that I can go through and I can just check things off every single day. Last couple of things we've got to do here is we'll add our calendar, very easy. Just type calendar and we'll do an inline calendar, call it calendar. And this just basically gives us a tool where we can reference, all right, what is the date of next Sunday when we're creating our new worksheet? Keep that tucked in there, close that up if we want to. And the last thing we'll do is create our jump block. So let's go here and literally just type week log. I like to do three spaces and one of these vertical lines and calendar. 
There's nothing special about what I'm typing right now. It's just easy links for me to use when I'm on my phone. Let's do a uh, purple background. And I'm gonna go ahead and bold this. And then all we need to do is come down here, click the block handle, copy the link to the block, highlight that, link to it. There it is. And then do the exact same thing for calendar. Copy the link, go to calendar, link, and there. And why don't we give it an icon as well? Let's give it that beefy arm for habits. And we have essentially recreated this habit tracker from scratch. So now if you can commit to using this over time, you're going to get, like I said before, this page that you can scroll through and see at a glance all of your progress on your habits. The other nice thing about using this strategy instead of using a database strategy where you're going into a special page for every week is this gives you a single page that you can favorite, have right at the top of your favorites bar if you want, and easily click into. Put it on the front of your iOS home screen. Put it on you know your Android widget, wherever you, wherever you get to your habit tracker. You can just come into it with one click, and because we're using this template button, your current week is always going to be at the top. So it makes checking off your habits a very, very quick process every single day. But you have this ability to jump to your week log, come in here and review past weeks if you want. You can come in here and you can write up a weekly summary. So it's just this nice one page that gives you a record of your habit tracking activities. That is gonna be it for this video tutorial. Like I said in the intro, you can go over to thomasjfrank.com slash templates to get the template version that I've made public of this uh, habit tracker for free. So if you've watched this far, I'm guessing you did it because you wanted to build this yourself and you know more power to you. But hey, if you watched it just because you were wanting to be entertained and this is what you watch for entertainment, but you don't wanna build it yourself, the uh, public template is available for you. You can get it for free. And um, I will have that link in the description down below if you like clicking links instead of typing things into your browser. If you have questions, let me know in the comments down below. And I also have uh, Twitter, Tom Frankly. You can ask me questions over there. I try my best to answer Notion questions as long as I'm able to answer them. And uh, honestly, a lot of times people's Notion questions are the thing that pushes me to learn more about Notion, pushing things, learning how to do these multi-column tricks, things like that. So feel uh, you know, no shyness about asking me questions. I will do my best to answer them when I can. Beyond that, I've got a whole basics course. If you wanna learn all the fundamentals of Notion, I have a course called Notion Fundamentals. You can find that over at thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals, going through all of Notion's main features, basically in the most logical order that I can think of. So if you wanna really master this software, then you can go through that and pair that with tutorials like these. I've got an advanced course coming up. And if you want to learn more about that and also get updates when I create new Notion content, I have a Notion tips email list. And you'll find that link in the description down below. Other than that, I've got no more things to pitch you or talk about or self-promote or whatever. So ask me questions if you have them. Otherwise, have yourself a lovely day and start tracking some habits.